everybody who's watching welcome back to a new video and welcome to the channel i'm Hi. with kate my girlfriend <laughs> and our puppies so we'll tell a little bit of this story um i've shared the puppies on the vlog before this is the last little guy before he goes home we named him doc i should say kate named him doc they were all they all had the snow white and the seven dwarves names because there was one girl in the letter and seven boys so I love the name Doc. I call him Dr. Dreo or Doc Boy. Cute little sucker and he's really, really, really um, added a lot of joy to our life as he has been here the longest out of all the four puppies that Kate had. Um, his new family is in Texas, so it's been a little bit of, a uh, little bit of extra effort for Kate and the family to just kind of get logistics, you know, all squared away mm -hmm. to get him home. And trust me, it's tempting to keep the little guy, but we've already got the Jade pup. She's back there. Say hi, Jade. <laughs> Isn't she the cutest? She's the best. Anyways, today's vlog is going to be a little bit about just what's going on around the homestead. So today, Kate and I are going to cut down a Christmas tree. Matty Ice and his family was nice enough to get us a Christmas tree permit from the United States or the... The Forest Service Department of Agriculture. Agriculture, I can't say it. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Let me see the logo. Forest Service. But we've got a permit to go cut down a Christmas tree. It's our first year doing it. There is uh, some rules and regulations to follow, sizes and certain trees that you can and cannot cut. So we got to make sure we get familiar with those on the way up. But it's going to be a beautiful drive and some beautiful scenery. So we'll head up there. It's going to be about an hour. So enjoy some of these clips that we filmed just along um, our drive up there. But these two getting a little antsy to get out. So uh, about 10 more minutes up the paved highway and then we'll cruise on a dirt road and we'll start scouting for trees. It's a little bit of a snowstorm up here, but part of the experience, I think it's pretty cool. Here's the conditions we're working with. It's snowy and cold, but what better way to get your Christmas tree than from the mountains? First time I'm doing it this way. I'm excited, yeah, me too. <laughs> You guys ready? We're gonna go walk and scout. All right, scout them up. He's like, yeah, I'm kind of cold. Stylish, you two. Wow, so colorful. So we just kind of parked right here on the road. And this shows an old road on Onyx, but we figured just to get some exercise and give the dogs a reason to run around, we're just going to walk this old road, look for trees, scout it out. Looks like somebody with a dog has actually done the exact same thing. So plenty of trees, plenty of trees to choose from. All right, the search is on for the perfect tree. Nah, what are you guys finding? Too small. <laughs> Dogs are having fun.
battery powered chainsaw. He's freezing. He's shivering so much. We're almost done. There's our tree. We got it. This guy. <laughs> I'm gonna trim it up just a little. Okay. Are you so happy for the tree? The tree looked like one in a million out there when we cut it. We had to take about a foot and a half off. And then now that we have it in here, it just looks like poverty. <laughs> it doesn't look. Christmas tree .com. Um, It's not like the ones you get at the little corner stand where they're like really full. <laughs> it they're looks like, insert Charlie Brown's Christmas tree in here. That's literally what it looks like in here. Um, that's, that's a real deal though. I don't even, Jade's like, why do we bring outside inside? <laughs> Um, it's, it's just really the memories that count. Um, exactly, babe. Look, we're going to give it some water. We got it centered in the window. We moved everything over a little bit. And it's like half dead already from the drive, I assume. Is it really? I don't know. It just had a lot of dead, dead, has a lot of dead stuff in it. Oh, wow. Well, I'll be... We have a month of this thing at least, and I'll be probably just really pro be probably Christmas. it's gonna be dead before Christmas. Oh gosh, how do you feel about the tree? Just brightens up the house and the mood. <laughs> oh my freaking gosh! <laughs> you like it? I know it looks good. It's a lot to take in at one time. Huh, puppies? You guys see this? Every needle lit up on that sucker. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. It's perfect. I just didn't know I could do it. It's good. It's just, it's just what every family would want. So grateful for this tree. All right. You guys are already sitting, you know. Hey, Doc, sit. Sit. Doc, sit. Jeez, it's some big ones, guys. It's the biggest. Hey, Doc. Homeboy loves it. They love elk bones. Oh, Doc boy. Look at this guy. I thought this would be fun to add into the vlog. I haven't really done much out here when it comes to the dog chews and cutting antler for a while. But my buddy Colton Larkin just came over. He's got a business, he does hats as well. But one of the things he does offer is laser engraved elk antler burr buckles. God, that was a lot. Let me show you what we got going on. So we went through the stack and he found some of the best burrs um, looking for like good size and good shape. And we just chopped one of them just here with this little cheapy bandsaw I got. So he takes these and can etch in your logo, etch in a design, etch in a name, literally anything. And he polishes them up really, really well. I'll have you send me some to post a picture. But if people want one, where do they go? Um, you can reach us on our Instagram page, it's Outdoor Traditions LLC or you can hit us up from email off of our website. Typically we deal with everybody just through Instagram and messaging and that's how we deal with most of our customers. So he's, he's sold out, so that's why he's here. So obviously he's gonna have, I think probably 15 or 16. 16 Some be. of them are accounted for, but if you guys want one, I'm gonna put it here on the screen. You guys can go check it out. But yeah, this is what we do when it comes to Trying to monetize as much as I can the antler. I cut the rest of it into dog chews and I have always saved the burrs because I felt like they had a little more value to them. 
Um, so that's one thing that I do to try to get, you know, the best money out of the entire antler because putting the burr on, on an actual dog shoe, I don't think it adds any value, but you're removing it, saving it for this type of stuff, I think does add some value. So that's what we're doing. We'll film a little bit. Yeah, it's perfect for you. Um, I've got a ton of them. They're hard to if find. If anybody needs an elk antler burr, hit me up because I got plenty of them. They're, they're hard to find too because I've had... I had a buddy tell me he had someone that had a crap load of them and he had piles of them and he sent me some some of them were really big but he wanted like 20 bucks a piece mm -hmm. for them and i was like that's not really doable for me as a resale so you're about the only guy i know to get them from I so far has been um, dedicated to Christmas trees. You guys got to see us go out and get our Christmas tree from the mountains of northern Utah and that tree is in the house about dead by now but we love it. We haven't put a ton of effort into decorating it. Probably put more time into decorating these little guys. So every year uh, we've been doing the giving trees with Hush and my friend Jim and his wife Heidi, the Giles family, have helped us get involved in this whole, can you give me another paper clip? This whole giving tree idea, which is super cool. So we've got um, a handful of these that Hush is sponsoring. We've got a bunch more up in Idaho with Casey and BMAC that Hush is sponsoring as well. And we had an extra tree um, kit which has the tree the lights and these bulbs so um, rack snacks is sponsoring this tree so we made a nice little variety of cash and gift cards we got pet smart on there um, we've got a visa card and another one like a bunch of random stuff right but we're giving this to a very deserving person that we admire a lot for their contribution to helping um, all the animals at the West Valley Animal Shelter which is a very special place in our heart because that is where Kate who is filming right now um, got our puppy Jay so we've got a lot to update you guys on as far as like the dogs that we fostered the four pit bull puppies that Kate got um, have moved on to their new homes I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this video um, but we've got two new bully breed puppies that are at the house with Jade right now and we're fostering them for the time being um, on hope, in hopes that we can find them a happy forever home. But this giving tree, this is a really fun event we've been doing during uh, Christmas and the holiday season and we're going to deliver this one tonight and just wanted to show you guys just to spread a little bit of Christmas cheer and uh, it's too late for anybody to kind of get involved in this year, but next year we will be doing the giving tree through Hush and Rack Snacks, I'm sure. So if it's something you're interested in getting involved in, we'll have more information on that next year. But for now, we're gonna go deliver this. This is kind of the rush, the adrenaline rush of gifting something like that to someone. And it's her birthday. <laughs> and it's also this person's birthday. So mm -hmm. um, this person came to our minds and our hearts instantly when we decided that Rack Snacks would, would take on and sponsor the treat. So let's go deliver. Uh oh, getting ready for Christmas party. He told me to get some drinks, so we got some minis for all the kids mostly. Some waters and even a couple energy drinks. I think I'm gonna end the vlog today. And before we end it though, we're gonna have a special guest appearance. Gotta go pick up one of my best friends at the airport. So we're gonna do that next and see if, uh, see if he's got any final words from his recent hunt. I wish everybody could be like a part of my text threads with uh, Shed Crazy. 
always fun, always positive, always entertaining. But yeah, Shad and Nathan, they went down to Texas to hunt with our buddy Jeff Helm. They got some critters. It's the Shad. Packing Maybe. heat, packing heat. Madhouse out here, bro. Let's get out of here. The parking and the parking enforcers are af getting after it too. They're, they're on it, but they can't catch us. <laughs> oh, We're out here. Flying on Christmas is not the jam. I was like, oh my gosh. It didn't even cross my mind because you know me, I don't ever even consider like dates and days are all the same. And Kate's like, when does Ben get back? Is he gonna have Christmas with his family? I was like, oh shoot, I don't know. Like. <laughs> That was last night, so I was like, man, if so, that's going to be meaning he's flying tomorrow. Yeah, it was like freaking TSA pre-check saved my life. I wouldn't have made my flight. Huge lines of security and desk and everything. Wild. It's fun. Well, back from Texas. Yeah, made it. It's nice down there. It's cold up here. I know. This is the worst weather we've had in a while. All right, guys. We got men from the airport. Are we on wide angle? Yes, we're on wide angle. So, we're parked and we're going to do truck talk. I think I've done truck talk with you more than anybody. Yeah, I'm a featured guest. We should probably make this an actual thing. Separate the channel. Just do truck talk episodes with I Ben. I like it. Um, ben has no clue what I want to get off my heart, the topic, but it is friendships. Okay. So, going into a new year, everybody's going to start thinking about what they want to work on. And the reason that this is like... I've been thinking about this is a lot lately is I have amazing friendships I have some of the best friends I have a lot of friends can't even manage them all but somehow some way I've been able to keep really good friendships for a really long time and that goes all the way back to like high school friendships and then some are just like category friendships I'll call them like shed hunting friends like hunting friends uh, shooting bow friends like you just kind of make friendships throughout your life. But anyways, the reason I wanted to talk about this is one thing I've noticed through comments on social platforms and then in person with individuals who have been able to kind of tag along on hunts that maybe aren't in the friend group, the feedback is always the same. And whether it's in comments, people just love the camaraderie of some of the hunts that we've done together as friends. People love to see the friendships and people also comment that they don't have friendships like that um and that is just sad right yeah, imagine sure. a life where we don't have friendships like that we have so i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this on ben real quick and sh let him share some things so ben how do you think people can build strong friendships <sighs> man that's a that's big question that's a big one huh yeah I think that a lot of it is born out of things in common. You know, most, I think my friends that I, that I grew up with, whether it was like high school friends, you had something in common, whether it was like a sport that you like to play and you kind of meet people through an activity. Mm -hmm. Ton of my friends now I met through hunting. I met through social media. And then I still have a lot of good friends from back in the olden days from high school and from when I was a little kid. But I think a similar interest is a good starting point because that's something you can automatically do together. Um, I think it's something that, especially difficult things like hunting, I think that they build bonds um, between people that are very, very strong. Um, and I think doing anything hard together can do that. And I'm sure that the guys find that in other aspects as well. I just understand it best from a hunting aspect. But um, I think the most important thing though, like that you can do is to be the friend that you want to other Dude, people. Nailed it, bro. I think that um, if you feel like people around you, like, man, I wish somebody cared about me enough to check in on me, then be the friend that checks in on people. Mm -hmm. Or if you feel like, man, I wish somebody cared enough about me to help me when I'm, you know, in need of like either you know, something at the house or whatever, then be the friend who makes sure that you're helping other people. Or I wish somebody would come with me to help me pack this bowl, then be the friend who volunteers to go help other people pack pack an elk dude or, i love it and i just feel like feeling the heat in that way you can find the relationships that are mutually beneficial and, and some friendships aren't mutually beneficial for mm -hmm. a while sometimes it's like you're one person does all the heavy lifting the other person just is kind of there until they realize the value of it 
True. But it takes it takes a lot of time and effort and energy, but it's definitely worth it. I think that having a bond with like other like a friendship bond with other people is one of the biggest things that can increase your happiness. Oh, in hundred percent. Dang. That's what I love about throwing topics at Ben. He's always coming in with the heat and everybody knows Ben through social media knows that he's a jokester. But I'll tell you what, I appreciate our friendships because he is someone that I go to for life advice and help. And for those of you who don't have that, because that's another common topic that people kind of shed light on is they just feel like they have nobody to go to, nobody to talk to, um, and a really good friendship. So I think it's important for us all to have strong friendships. We are not on this earth. We're not meant to do this life alone. So build your community. Ben nailed it. I've been thinking about that. To find good friends, you have to be that friend. You have to be that person that you want in a friendship. He nailed it. I don't even need to add on to any of that. Um, but man, if if you're going into 2024, you're feeling some type of way, like you don't have a strong community. Like Ben, you find that typically through a common interest, um, Facebook groups, social media, and you gotta be vulnerable to build strong friendships. And sometimes, you know, you're not gonna click with every person, but Dude, the amount of people that I've linked up through social media to go on a hunt with, to go shed hunting with, and those friendships seem to last forever. So put yourself out there. You're never gonna know what your blessings are until you put yourself out there. So in 24, I want everyone to have strong friendships. And if you feel just through watching my videos or Ben's or through the Hush channel that it, it creates some type of community, I would love to hear about that because I, I think that's very important with our content is we're just, building a community so somewhere in there heck you might even comment on others and find a friend through uh this community but man friendships yeah. strong friendships especially men right everyone talks about like men have nobody to go to nobody cares about men uh, i don't relate to that because this guy right here jordan casey brian dude i've got so many friends that i know i can call with confidence that they're going to pick up the phone in a time of need that i can spill my heart onto their shoulders and they'll take that weight and even if it's listening or giving advice advice they'll be there for me and i just think i don't want anybody to not have that so if, man like it just kills me to think that some people are lonely and loneliness is a dark place when you're alone especially with negative thoughts you just spiral down so guys if anybody's watching this that feels like they need a little love um I care, I know Ben cares, I know my group of friends, when we talk about people, we talk about what we do for work, the community and making people feel just welcome and a part of something is very important to us. So, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas for me. Yeah, Happy New Year, and uh, if you guys feel like you need a friend, like, drop it in the comments, put where you're from, I mean, yeah. maybe this can turn into something where people could get to know each other here. Or, and yeah, like Eric said, be vulnerable and get out there and find people because there are good people out there who are looking for the same thing you are mm -hmm. and, and it can make your life a lot better. Yeah, there's all, that's like, if there's anything with this stuff that we do, if there's anything I feel like I can put more time and energy and effort into, it's somehow building more of a community even stronger than what we have now. And I don't always have the answers to that. We try to do events. We go to expos, we try to have little fundraisers. Like what else can we do if you guys have any ideas? What else can we do with our platforms to create more of a community uh, to you guys? Let us know in the comments. For sure. Man, love yeah. you dude. You too bro. Welcome on your buck, or congrats to your buck. Thank you man. You guys check out his video. It's gonna be over on his channel, Shed Crazy, in the link description. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year everybody. Love you, thanks for all the support and see you on the next episode. See you guys. <laughs>